it takes to drop all 10 pins on your frame. And we're joined by the Hall of Famer, Johnny Petraglia. And uh, what was the impetus for coming up with this scoring style? Well, Rob, we'd like to have a lot of non-bowlers start watching our show and, and increase it. And by making this, simplifying the scoring system, it gives people that don't know much about bowling uh, a chance to really understand it. It's very easy. Uh, ten is a perfect score, one ball each frame, and the frame isn't over until all ten pins are knocked down. The least amount of shots in the ten frames wins the match. Here's Wendy McPherson, our first toss here. And is that close to a 7-10. And Johnny, thank you, thank you for simplifying the scoring system for Rob. Uh, <laughs> remember in the, in the Missy Bellender leaving the blot 7-10 on lane six and Wendy McPherson almost does the same. And you know, that's where your scoring system is so unique and so neat. If she leaves a pocket 7-10, you know, obviously you're gonna go for one pin. If it doesn't bounce out, which it normally doesn't, remember only three 7-10s have ever been made on television. Now you have to get up and throw another ball to cover the seven pin. So in essence, Johnny, with your scoring system, it's three balls to take down 10 pins. A lot of times, and, and what's critical is the second ball, if you don't strike, becomes just as important as the first ball on that 7-10. If Missy, for instance, in the previous match would have missed the 10 pin, she would have needed a mark in the 10th frame to tie Carolyn. And Carolyn, your number one seed coming in now she's got a win here to move on to the championship match next. Come on. Hey! That's a good start. Now, Johnny, if this wasn't called the Johnny Petraglia scoring system, what would it have been called? It would have probably been called bowling golf, I guess, because in a way it works the same way. The least amount of strokes to get the ball in the hole wins on a golf course. The least amount of of balls it takes to knock the pins wins on the bowling lane. So then is a one considered a par? You know, that would be very good question, Rob. It would depend on the lane condition. If, um, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, that, that, uh -huh. That's a great question, because if we're bowling on the cheetah pattern, maybe one and a quarter or one and a half might be considered a par. If we're bowling on the shark, two is a par. And, uh, and each scoring system will be different. It's playing a municipal course or playing Augusta National. The pars are different. Hey, Rob, can I ask you a question? Why are you trying to complicate this seemingly easy <laughs> scoring, uh, giant Petraglia scoring thing? You, you, you know, it, just leave it alone. It's fine the way it is. <laughs> Here's Missy, her second shot. Okay, Rob, that's a par. Are you yeah. happy? <laughs> well, is it par? No, that, that might have been a bogey. <laughs> Well, no, I, I guess we could check on, on how it's gone <laughs> so far, what would be the average score of all the scores that have been bowled, and we can find out pretty much what the scoring pace I'm is. I'm going to let Randy do that, Johnny. <laughs> that means more math. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Wendy McPherson. She has a busy off-season coming up. We'll tell you about that in just a second. Her effort here in the second. Two points to one. She's at three through two, and wow, great shot. Wendy, Carolyn Doran Ballard, and Stephanie Nation. And Nation, you will see in our championship match. They are all going to represent the U.S. at the upcoming Women's World Championship. 43 countries in all participating. That's coming up in Las Vegas in August. Okay, guys, so here you go. In our first two matches, there were 36 out of 60 frames, 36 strikes thrown. So about one and a half, a little bit less than one and a half. About 1.3 would be par. Play off. Whoa. Again, a big break and almost wow. able to get all of them to drop. Ah. But, you know, Johnny, she, she talked about going to get different equipment. She didn't like uh, the way she matched up in her first match. She goes flush the first ball. That shot there goes right through the nose. And, and you know, I'm looking at her bowling on a fairly easy oil pattern, and to me it looks like she's locked up. I think, I think you're right, Randy. She seems to be a little bit more of the back of the ball than she normally is. Misses oh the my. six, and she is still up. And she's still oh up. Oh my God, sparing 101. That is, like we said before, critical. The second shot is just as critical as the first. Well, how do you explain that for somebody? Uh, how do you explain it, Randy? Let me tell you. Go on, Carolyn. Go ahead, tell us. We're waiting, and you look great in pink. <laughs> Carolyn, what, one of the all-time great quotes this year, telling me I'm, I'm part Czech, I'm part Irish, I like my wine, I like to argue. She was feisty. 
with Brienne earlier today. So, John, I mean, is that is that the residue of her trying to figure out why that last shot went high and it's just a lack of focus while she misses that six pin? I think that's a very good point. I think that uh, you, you're concentrating so much on striking and hitting the pocket that when you hit the nose, why did that happen? You're taking the spare for granted. Missy Bellander, her effort in the second. Oh, Almost a, yeah, she's been dancing with that 7-10. Almost hasn't another blowout 7-10, and it, it, you could see that, that, quite honestly, the angle is what's helping her get to the pocket. Watch the rotation on this bowling ball. There's a lot of spin to that rotation. Yes, there is. And, again, it looks like back-to-back -back identical hits. Yeah, Missy's got that little bit of a spin biscuit so that it's it's scooting through the front half of the lane, saving all the energy for the back half, and it's really opened up the lane for her. In the second showdown elimination match, Missy had six strikes through the first seven frames, still seeking her first here. But she does take care of the single pin conversion, so two points in frame number two, and Wendy McPherson with the lead after two. More Women's Series Showdown presented by the USBC after this. A house that didn't have a PC coming away from Lake Wales, Florida. Five down, five to go. Let's see who moves on to the title match. Coming your way April 22nd, the PBA King of Bowling, powered by Ant. Chris Barnes will be there, as will the top ten from the PBA Player of the Year point list, which was eventually won by Wes Malott. Wes Malott will begin as your king of bowling. Take a look now at the Cats comparison of our three bowlers right now. Boy, and look how tight all these numbers are. The rev rates are almost identical right here, and that's why they're able to play the, pretty much the same part of the lane. Speed-wise, all right around 17, 18 miles an hour. So the only difference with the three players is direction of rotation. You're going to watch Wendy McPherson here. She's got a lot more side roll than Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Wendy Mack, three strikes in five frames for seven total points using the Johnny Petraglia scoring system. Not too shabby. Remember, the low score moves on to the championship match to take on Stephanie Nation and Jody Wessner. And right now, Wendy McPherson is feeling it. She's feeling it, Rob. Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Three straight strikes. Looking for four in a row and five overall here in the elimination match. I'm saying it, Randy. I'm saying it. Hambone! <laughs> so four in a row for CDB. Rob, this bowling ball just hit as hard as you just hit me in the arm while you were singing <laughs> Hambone. And she's, she's speaking of feeling it, mm -hmm. boy, she's getting locked in. Yeah. Missy Bellander working off a strike, though, in the fifth. And there's three for her in the elimination match. And again, like you saw earlier in the day, when the smile is out, you know, things are going all right for Missy. So there we are through six. If Wendy and Carolyn are tied, they would have a one ball bowl off. Gets another 10 to drop. And a single point for Wendy Mack in the seventh. Wendy won in Medford, Oregon. To get her here to Lake Wales. And you see CDB flawless outside of that single pin spare that she missed in the second, which gave her three points. But because of the Johnny Petraglia modified scoring system, a strike here, and she will tie for the low lead. Come on, roll up! Yeah! Oh, 
Great. It's starting to look like it's creeping higher and higher and higher, but she's getting away with it. She got that one down on the floor just a little bit sooner, which caused it to roll a pinch early. But because she's got her hand in the right spot now, that ball rolled out perfectly and tripped the 4-7. No shortage of emotion from CDB. No, sir. Love her fire. Love this woman's smile, Missy Bellander. Hello, 710. And once again, uh-oh. 